What's going on, YouTubers? This is my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 2 review, where we're going to be talking about some of the best parts of the episode and any Marvel goodness they threw at us. By the way, spoilers ahead. So starting off, we have magic. Magic, everybody. Oh, my God. Fitzsimmons is looking at the box that the ghost lady came from last episode, and they're trying to figure out what tech was used to keep her inside the box. As they're talking about what must have drove those men insane, Mac tells them that they were all hallucinating a ghost woman who could turn invisible. Of course, Fitzsimmons has a bunch of theories about what exactly it was, and Mac just says, well, maybe she really is a ghost. Oh, pesky supernatural lovers. Don't you know that science is the answer to everything? Mephesto, Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange, Dormammu, Swamp Thing, Blade, Satana, Hellstorm. Science! All science. Next, we have what I like to call Quake Rider. She goes to confront Robbie and doesn't even realize that he's not an inhuman. When he tells her that he sold her soul to the devil, she just kind of laughs it off, and she's like, oh my god, you're crazy. The devil. I mean, whatever, come on. In a world with Spider-Man and Quicksilver and Thor and Captain America, Iron Man, the Hulk, all these crazy be Vision, Scarlet Witch, come on. Really? Just really, Daisy? Then we have Quake Rider having a quick sparring match because Daisy dropped the gay bomb and he definitely didn't like that. After he takes Daisy out with no problem because, come on, he's the Ghost Rider, they have this sweet little moment where he tells her that he's looking for a reason to kill her because, like she said last time, she actually wants to die. I don't know why. He doesn't find anything, but he does find something that may link to his past. When she mentions the Pasadena lab, he realizes something and rushes over there because, of course, he knows something that we don't. Which brings me to an awesome moment of the episode, guys. Oh my god, I'm not even just just watch it. I'm not gonna talk. Watch it. Tell me you didn't feel the love between the two of them as she's jumping on top of his car trying to get to him. Oh my god, I love it. The chemistry is there, you know it is. Oh, I hope they end up together. It's adorable. And of course, Robbie shows up just in the nick of time to help Fitz and Mac because one of the ghost people were there trying to blow up the entire lab. And oh my god, it, it was so cool when the Ghost Rider just grabs the ghost and just burns him. I mean, classic Ghost Rider crap, right? They're ghosts. Nobody can touch them. Nobody can interact with them. But the Ghost Rider can grab the guy and just burn him. Now, I mentioned the supernatural earlier, so let's keep up with that. We see more ghost people. The ghost lady from the first episode shows up and releases more of her friends that apparently volunteered for this kind of experiment. I mean, when has that actually ever been the wrong thing to do, right? The part that made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside was when they talk about the Darkhold. Now, the Darkhold is a book that was written by the elder god Chathon. Ch Chathon? Ch Chathon? I don't know how to... I'm not going to pronounce it again after that. And it held all the black magic that he ever knew. Again, once again, magic. Also, anyone that used the Darkhold would eventually become possessed by his spirit if they weren't strong enough to resist it. The Darkhold was even used by a group of people called the Darkholders, and they used the book to create the first vampire, Varney. Now let's talk about what the fuck happened with this new director. I have no idea who this guy is! At first I was hoping it was gonna be Jim Hammond, a version of the Human Torch who was actually an android with a soul. Then I was watching the episode and I thought it might be Jeffrey Mace, also known as Patriot. But then he says he's an inhuman when he's putting the smack down on May. Which is cool and all, but I don't really know who that leaves us with as the identity of the director. Maybe I'm just slipping. But the best moment of seeing the new director was when he goes and he tells Coulson that he's not gonna tell him what they're doing with May. And he hits him with the classified line. Sorry, we can't tell you about May. It's classified. Sorry, Coulson. Just a huge slap in the face to Coulson. And if I didn't think that the new director was so freaking tough, I definitely would have wanted to see Coulson kick his teeth in. Lastly, I'll point out my favorite part of the episode was with Max still having his shotgun axe. He waited seasons to make this thing and finally, finally it happened and he's keeping it. It's not going anywhere. That is his go-to weapon. Shotgun axe. So for that, we thank you, Mac. Also, the moment where he finds out that Daisy's been working with Yo-Yo and getting those bone healing meds, wow. Just, you could really see the emotion in Mac's face, and it was so great because there's this strain. Mac's always been there for Daisy. Mac's always done anything he can. He almost got himself killed last season to try and get Daisy back. And he just, like, he was betrayed. He was utterly betrayed at what Daisy had done. I almost started tearing up when I watched this scene. Now, this episode leaves us with a lot of questions to be answered, and I am so grateful for that because episode two is so much going on. I cannot wait to see what they're going to do about this stuff, guys. Let me know what you think. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to, you know, go down in the grand scheme of things, especially with the new Doctor Strange movie coming out? Who do you want to see show up in the thing, you know, and what are your theories on what's going to go on later on? Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.